the Supreme Court, in a judgment delivered last week, Union of India v. Rajendra and Shah, struck down most provisions of 97th Constitutional Amendment. The majority, Justice R. F. Nariman and B. R. Gavay, held that the 97th Amendment had to get the ratification from the states as provided in Article 368-2 of the Constitution. Since it was not obtained, the amendment is invalid to the extent it relates to cooperative societies, the court held. Justice K. M. Joseph dissented to opine that the entire part IXB is liable to struck down. The Supreme Court's interpretation of the word change in Article 368-2 proviso of the Constitution led to quashing of most provisions of the 97th Constitutional Amendment. Article 368 of the Constitution. By virtue of this provision, the Parliament can exercise its constituent power amend by way of addition, variation or repeal any provision of this Constitution. But that should be done in accordance with the procedure laid down in the Article 368-2. Procedure to amend Constitution. Article 368-2 lays down the procedure. The amendment can be initiated only by the introduction of a bill for the purpose in either House of Parliament. Thereafter it shall be presented to the President for his assent to the bill. Thereupon the Constitution shall stand amended in accordance with the terms of the bill. But there is a catch. An extra step is prescribed by the proviso if the amendment bill seeks to make any change in. A. Article 54, Article 55, Article 73, Article 162. Article 241 or Article 279A or B. Chapter 4 of Part 5, Chapter 5 of Part 6, or Chapter 1 of Part 11, or C. Any of the lists in the Seventh Schedule, or D. The representation of states in Parliament, or E. Provisions of this article. In such cases, the before the bill is presented to the President for assent, the amendment has been ratified by the legislatures of not less than one half of the states by passing resolutions to that effect. No ratification by states for 97th Amendment. In the case of 97th Amendment, the procedure laid down in 368-2 proviso was not followed. In other words, there was admittedly no ratification by the states. The center's logic was that the amendment does not change anything in the 7th Schedule or Article 246, 3, which forms part of the Chapter 1 of Part 11 of the Constitution of India, and therefore the proviso part is not attracted. But the Supreme Court did not accept this reasoning. According to it, the change spoken about by Article 368, 2, proviso in any provision of the Constitution need not be direct in the sense of adding, subtracting, or modifying the language of the particular article or provision spoken of in the proviso. It would mean a change which, though not in the language of any provision of the Constitution, would yet be a change which would impact a particular article and the principle contained therein in some significant way, the court said. This was so held after the court noted that the judgments in Sankari Prasad Singh Deo v. Union of India, 1952 SCR 89, Sajan Singh v. State of Rajasthan, 1965, 1 SCR 933 and Kahoto Hollihan v. Zakilhu, 1992 SUP, 2, SCC 651 speak of a change in effect principle. Now the task became easy for the court. The court said that Article 246-3 read with List 2 of the 7th Schedule of the Constitution of India reflects an important constitutional principle that can be said to form part of the basic structure of the Constitution, namely, the fact that the Constitution is not unitary but quasi-federal in character. So the question that the court had to then consider was whether this principle can be said to have been infracted by inserting Part IXB into the Constitution of India so that the state's legislative powers contained in Article 246-3 read with Entry 32 List 2 of the 7th Schedule can be said to have been affected in a significant manner? The court then analyzed the Part 9B of the Constitution consists of Articles 243-ZH to 243-ZT, inserted by the 97th Amendment. The court found that the Part IXB actually curtails the exclusive legislative power which the state's posses by virtue of Article 246-3 and Entry 32 of List 2 and 7th Schedule. It also noticed that cooperative societies as a subject matter belongs wholly and exclusively to the state legislatures to legislate upon, whereas multi-state cooperative societies i.e., cooperative societies having objects not confined to one state alone, is exclusively within the ken of. Parliament, Para 26. So this led the court to find that there is actually a change in effect of the quasi-federal principle. Part IXB, insofar as it applies to cooperative societies which operate within a state, required ratification under both subclauses, B and C, of the proviso to Article 368-2 of the Constitution of India, the court held. Since there was no such ratification, 
Part IXB inserted by 97th Amendment was struck down to the extent it relates to cooperative societies. In the next article, I will examine how the court made the Part IXB remain operative only insofar as it concerns multi-state cooperative societies. Watch this space.